The fuselage sections from Germany have been at sea for three days and are now approaching their destination. The wings, once loaded onto their ship, travel through the Irish Sea and across the Bay of Biscay, aided by near-perfect weather. Yet more fuselage components come from Saint-Nazaire in France. All these massive parts are headed for the port of Poyac, where the next phase will begin. First to arrive are the German fuselage parts. Here the ship's Russian captain, feeling protective of his cargo, gets angry with the French dock workers for not being careful enough. Using yet more low loaders, the parts are soon transferred onto barges and begin a 59-mile journey up the picturesque river Garonne. The trip takes in the ancient city of Bordeaux and its historic bridge, the 180-year-old Pont de Pierre. Here again the clearance is minimal, only a couple of feet on either side. Barge captain Elie Blanchy has never carried anything like this before. It all goes to plan and he clears the bridge easily, helped by state-of-the-art technology that allows the barge to sink into the water. <laughs> Meanwhile, the wings have arrived at the dockside and they too are loaded onto a barge and begin their journey up the river. The last stage of this incredible journey is by road, 152 miles to the final assembly line in Toulouse. The three pieces of fuselage are gathered in a gigantic convoy, each hauled by a 600 horsepower lorry. To minimize the disturbance, they travel at night, winding their way through the French countryside on roads that have been closed off by the police. The trip will take three nights, but right at the end, in the darkness, awaits one final hurdle. Building the world's largest airliner is anything but straightforward. This extraordinary convoy of massive aircraft components is nearing the end of its journey, but it faces one last obstacle before it can reach the huge, brand new facility built to put it all together. Halfway along the final stretch, lies the small village of Levignac. This is the narrowest point on the entire journey. The fuselage will pass within inches of people's homes. It's an event that's attracted massive public interest and the police are taking crowd control very seriously. Daniel Boutonnet is the man who has to keep this huge show on the road. I'm confident, I'm uh, not anxious, uh, uh, but uh, for me, uh, I would prefer to be uh, three hours uh, in, uh, in the future. It's time to find out if the measurements have been correct. Travelling by car ahead of the first lorry, Daniel needs to keep the drivers warned of any hazards. His main problem is the hundreds of people that have turned out to watch the massive parts go by. I'm a little bit afraid by the number of people and hazards the world are. The industry is very narrow, we can't have a, uh, some accident with people, it's uh, what could be uh, dan very dangerous. At last they enter Levignac. <laughs> the police are nervous. Progress is painfully slow. Now the moment of truth. Will the 24-foot-wide fuselage fit through the gap? 
this is the narrowest espace for the streets for all crossing Bevignac. Yes, it's really in here, in this place where we are. <laughs> They've done it. The gap is just 20 inches either side. All three components squeeze through without a hitch. We are crazy. Bravo! While some applaud the convoy, others are not so happy with the disruption. When the plane hits full production, this will happen once every week. With Levignac successfully navigated, the last 11 miles are relatively easy. At last, after traveling by ship, barge and lorry, the lights of the final assembly line are in sight. Although it's nearly three o'clock in the morning, there are several hundred people waiting outside the massive new factory. Among them, Charles Champion, ready to applaud this moment of triumph. The delivery papers are signed and once the wings arrive in a few days' time, Charles and his team will be ready to assemble what they hope will be the future of aviation, the Airbus A380. For some people it's like a relief because they've, they've delivered the final assembly line, they've done the factory, they've demonstrated the transport system. But for us guys, we are looking at the next steps, integration, first flight, then flight test phase, and then deliveries to the customers. Although they've come a long way, there's still a very long way to go.